everyone, my name is Heather. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be doing a little tutorial on how to create these gorgeous papers using texture paste and stencils. And I love to use these in my journals. I do all the time, I use them all the time. And what I like to do is I like to, you could actually do this process right in your journal, but I like to create mine and make like a little stash of them on the side so that way whenever I'm creating, I could just pull one out or whatever. So what you will need is you are going to need, what did I do with it? A butter knife. So I just use the same knife for every time I use my texture paste. I just keep this in my little craft cart. You can see I still have texture paste on there. So <laughs> I just always use that. I know that there's other applicators that you can use for this process. If you Google or like go on YouTube and search how to use texture paste, there's a lot of videos on it. There's probably other application applicators that you can use, but that's just what I like to use. And then this texture paste is one that you can buy. It is from Ranger. And I bought this at my local craft store. I bought it at Michael's and it is, um, I, I had another kind before this one and I can't remember what it was. And I actually liked that one a little bit better, but either way, I'm not gonna be using this today. I'm gonna show you a little trick. So um, yeah, if you Google texture paste, you will be able to find different kinds and they're I think most of them are white. I don't know, maybe they do come in colors. But the the one thing that I'm gonna tell you this little tip is from my friend Angie. She, I have featured her on my channel, you know, many times and she told me that she likes to use this drywall spackling. And um, I'm gonna show it to you here. It's a very large container of it because I actually bought it for using on a project for my house, but it's, a lightweight drywall spackling by DAP. This is the one that I use. I use this all the time. And uh, it's fast drying or whatever. And it's actually meant to fill in holes on your walls and stuff. But this is what it looks like when you open it up. So it looks kind of like a paste almost. And so we're gonna be using that today for this process because it works so well. I actually like it better than I like this one but that's just my opinion and these ones here have all been created with that drywall spackling stuff so we're going to be using that and then you're going to need some stencils so i'm going to use these two here they are from tim holtz they're the tim holtz mini something i'll make sure i link them below but i'm going to use the rose one and then this like little wildflower one and then I'm also going to use this one, which is, uh, it is from Walmart. It's, I bought this at Walmart. It's a, the brand is Waverly and I can't remember the name of it, but I'll try to link both of these in the description so that you can find them. I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to find stencils. If you go on to Amazon and you look, they have a lot of different stencils on there as well. So, um, you're gonna need some papers. So I like to use the old book pages. I think that looks really pretty. The one thing I'll say is that I think the darker looks better. So like if you look at this, for example, I still love this, it looks really pretty, but it definitely shows up better on the darker paper versus the light. So you wanna be mindful of that, just whatever your preference is. But I have a big stash of just scrap papers that I have thrown in a bin. So I grabbed some and I just thought some of these would make, I actually think this envelope could be really pretty. I was thinking about trying that. I like this blue, it almost looks like newspaper. If you don't have access to any old papers, you could definitely use printables. You could even use newspaper. I mean, you could use any type of paper, gift wrap, you know, whatever brown paper bag would work really great. It would kind of give that same vintage effect. So um, if you have a grocery bag, a brown grocery bag, and you have drywall spackling and a butter knife in your house, you could totally make this project. Okay, and then, I don't know, I just pulled a bunch of papers here, but some of them are like little scraps of French papers from my projects and some, some sheet music and tiny little book pages. So 
I'm gonna pick through this whenever I start to do that and then we will get started. So um, you're, go you're also gonna wanna ha have like a bunch of paper towels because this is a little bit messy. I will say that. So I'm just going to lay down. I have my little paper towels that are kind of like cut to the side, the little size, but any size paper towel will work. And I'm gonna lay that down while I do this. And then let's see, which one do I want to use? I think we'll just start with a book page one because I feel like that is just such a great choice. And I feel like we all have book pages. So what I like to do is just kind of cut off a little section. You could use the whole book page. So for example, if you were going to use this larger stencil, what I like to do is like do half of it on the book page, but I will do one with you here soon, but we'll start with the roses. So I'm just gonna take this cute little French book page here and then I'm going to get a little bit of my drywall spackling onto a paper plate just for the sake of the video because I don't want to put that big huge thing on the camera. So I'm putting it on there. It's kind of like thicker than like, like cake, like whipped cream or something. Like for icing for a cake, it's a little bit thicker than that, but that's the consistency of it. So we'll just get our little stencil. And what I like to do is you can put the stencil down and you can put it on the entire image of the stencil and just do it on that. But I like to kind of pick out the uh, this little section of this rose. I tend to do that a lot where I just kind of pick out a certain portion of the stencil. And I just hold it with my fingers I'm gonna move this over here so you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, okay. I just hold this with my fingers. You could tape it if you'd like. And I just get a little bit on the tip of my knife. You don't want too much on there. And then you just go over the stencil with it. And you just get the parts of the stencil that you want to show like if you're just beginning, I would suggest just go over the whole stencil. Don't pick and choose the parts like I am. And then keep going to cover the parts that you like. Just holding it down with your finger. And you wanna make sure you have your paper towel nearby because, because then you wanna scrape off like a lot of that extra. And you're just gonna to wanna to use like a real gentle hand with this. Take your time, be careful. Once you start putting this, this texture paste on, it kind of sucks it, your stencil to the paper a little bit. So it doesn't move around quite as easy. You don't wanna to scrape too thin. You wanna make sure you have a nice, even, I mean, I like to put a nice even coat. I know other people, they might leave it a little bit more, like a little bit more stuff on there, but I like it a little bit on the lighter side. And actually, you know, it's something that you have to play with. You have to kind of do it and do it and do it until you figure out like, oh, that's just the right amount for me, you know? And then you just take your stencil, you hold your book page in your thumb or your finger and just lift up gently. And there you have it and it's and it's on there and it takes about you know I would give it about 30 minutes and it's dry completely dry and it's just gorgeous I love doing this so much it's so simple now whenever you get ready to clean your stencil what I like to do is just get a wet paper towel and wipe it first gently like I'll put it back on and then I'll wipe it and then I wash it with soap and water just be careful, you don't wanna put a bunch of this stuff down your, your drain, your sink drain. I wanted to make sure I said that because you could really clog your drain, I think, if you were just like dumping a bunch of spackling down your sink. So 
I'll go ahead and do another one on this on this pretty sheet music here. And let's see here. It might be hard for you to see, but I can see like right where I want to put the the texture paste because of the, the way the stencil is designed. So like I said, I'm only going over like those certain parts. It's almost like stamping with texture. I love it so much. And okay, so another thing that I would like to try and I'm gonna try soon is um, I wanna add a little color to this white to make different colored textures, texture papers. There, so pretty. So you can kind of see on these ones that like this one doesn't show up quite as much as this one, but it's still very, very pretty. Okay, so we did that rose one. Okay, so we did that rose one. I'm gonna go ahead and do one of these, like this is like a damask pattern. I think I'm gonna use this um, little sheet of sheet music here and I'm just going to place it so that I'm only doing half of this just because I know that's how I like it and then get a little bit of your so on this particular stencil I'm not going to pick and choose on this part what I'm covering except for I'm just cutting in half and I'm not going to do that bottom half so you definitely want to make sure you're holding it with your fingers and getting yourself covering all of the pieces, all the little stencil bits. And you just want to kind of spread it like you're spreading icing on a cake. So I would love to know if you guys have tried this before and if you have, did you add color? So if like, like if I wanted to make this a little bit green or a little bit blue, I was thinking about what to add to it. Like should I add some type of pigment of some kind? I've seen other people use like a little bit of chalk or um I was thinking like watercolors. I'm not sure what, what I want to add. So if you've done this before and you have any suggestions, please leave that in the comments. I would love to know. So there, you just lift it up and there you have it. And then if you get a little piece that um, like you like you don't want it on there, like that one, you just can wipe it right with your fingers. So yeah, looks so pretty. So like if once I once this dries, I'll probably cut that part off and just throw it in my little bin so that I can keep these little pieces ready for whenever I want to do a journal or whatever. So I don't know, maybe I'll try this envelope. I'm thinking this might be pretty on here. So yeah, let's just give it a try. I want to make sure I have the stencil on the right side. <laughs> yeah, make sure you're always putting the paste on the right side of the stencil because if you put it, if you flip it, then all that leftovers will go on your paper. You don't want to do that. So hold with your, hold with your fingers and spread it like batter. I mean, icing. I don't know why I keep wanting to say batter. Yeah, this stencil here, if you are in the US, and you have a Walmart near you. They, this was in the craft section, so. And like I said, the brand is Waverly. I really love, they have, a, they have a bunch of different stencils, but this one was my favorite for sure. I have a hard time finding small stencils. It seems like they're all so big. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And like, so the amount that you want, I would say, like if you can see the pattern, and but yet it's not 
all completely wiped off. Like I said, you're gonna have to play with it to see what you like, but I kind of know whenever I have enough on there, just from experience of doing it. And then just lift up. Oh yeah, that's pretty. I like that a lot on the uh, envelope. So then the part on the bottom that is like, maybe just a little bit heavy, I'll just wipe that with my finger. Yeah, I really like that. That's cute. So yeah, you guys get the idea. Maybe I'll do one more with you. I really wanted to, I think I'm gonna change this paper towel because there's a lot of texture paste on there. And then um, another thing I wanted to say is like, get yourself a wet paper towel and keep it to the side so that you can keep wiping your knife because if you get the dried bits on there and you're doing this, it will start to mess up your your project. So, and another thing I wanted to say is if you are using, like if you take out some of this and put it on a paper plate, this stuff dries really fast. So you only wanna take out a little bit. I probably took out way too much. So I'm just letting you know that it will dry and then it won't work well. So maybe we'll try this, this little pretty thing. I love this flower here. So I'm just gonna try to like put the texture paste just on that section, not the whole stencil, just cause I like to do that. So you just spread it on. back in and wipe a lot of that excess okay so once we have it all on there then we are just going to lift it up like that oh that looks really pretty I love that one okay yeah so I keep switching my stencils and you want to make sure that um they that the texture paste doesn't dry on your stencil so I'm gonna take a little break here, I'll be right back, and I'm gonna go wash my stencils off just so that the paste doesn't dry on there because it will ruin them. So I have this little box that I like to use to put my papers in. It's just the base of an old cigar box. Um, I just like to take all my little papers that I've created. I like to sit down for a few hours and just make a bunch of them and put them in my little box, and then I have them for whenever I'm ready to do my journaling or uh, whatever artwork I'm working on. So, so yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching this process. Let me know if you have never tried this before and you want to try, or if you have done it and maybe you have a few tips to give that I didn't talk about. And also, if you guys have added color to your texture paste, I would love to know what you use to put the color in. That would be a great tip. I could probably just need to Google that, but and also a big thank you to Angie for your super cool tip about the drywall spackle. I am forever changed by it. I love using it. I think it just looks beautiful. So yeah, so I hope you guys all have a great day and I will talk to you again soon.